Gas chromatography and mass spectrometry is the combination of two techniques we have already covered on the channel, namely, and perhaps a bit obviously, gas chromatography and mass spectrometry. The gas chromatography first separates the different components of a mixture, and these components are then further separated based on their mass to charge ratio. The subsequent results from a gas chromatography mass spectrometer are hence three dimensional, consisting of the gas chromatogram that can be used for qualitative and quantitative analysis, in addition to the mass spectra that can be used to identify unknown analytes and determine structural and chemical properties of molecules. Before we dive into how to read these chromatograms, let us examine how the process is carried out. First we have to zoom in on the gas chromatograph part. In a nutshell it is very simple and works based on the same principles as all other column chromatographies. Its main components are the mobile phase, a molecular sieve, the column and within it the stationary phase in addition to a detector. GC is carried out in the following manner. First a sample is introduced into the gas chromatograph right before the column, often using a syringe. Then the molecules are separated based on how they interact with the stationary phase. Like separates like and therefore nonpolar columns are good for separating nonpolar analytes and polar columns are good for separating polar analytes. In addition, more volatile compounds get separated more quickly than less volatile compounds. After these compounds have been separated from another, they exit the column one by one, and when they do so they are detected and the results are displayed in a gas chromatogram. However, in addition to this, they also enter the mass spectrometry part of the device for further analysis. Now it is time for the mass spectrometer to do its magic. Although all mass spectrometers ionize and then separate the inserted sample based on its mass to charge ratio, the way in which they do so actually varies quite a lot. In the case of GCMS, one common mass spectrometry method is quadrupole mass spectrometry. In a nutshell, the sample is first ionized using electron ionization, which is basically just bombarding the sample with electrons until it ionizes. Then the sample enters the mass analyzer part of the device. Here, two electrical fields caused by the four parallel rods start affecting the ionized sample. These magnetic fields cause the ions to oscillate depending on their mass to charge ratio. By varying the strength of these two magnetic fields, ions of different sizes can be selected by the mass analyzer. Therefore, we vary these magnetic field strengths in order to scan for different mass to charge ratios of the sample. As I told you, I have covered both how gas chromatography and quadrupole mass spectrometry work in more detail in previous videos, so I will link both of them in the description of this one. Please check them out if you wish to understand either of these techniques even better. Also, remember to like the video while you are there. Now, as promised, let us examine how to interpret the results from a GCMS device. Much like with the rest of this device, it is merely a question of adding the two results displaying techniques on top of one another. Starting with the gas chromatogram, it displays peaks of the generated current from the detector against retention time. In other words, how much sample is exiting the column, how long does it take the sample component to start exiting the column from the time that the whole sample was inserted, and for how long does it exit the column from the time that it starts exiting. The area under this curve that gets created by this information will give us the concentration of the sample. More area means more concentration and less area means less concentration. Then the mass spectrometry provides another dimension in which we can further analyze these different peaks. By selecting any one of the peaks in the gas chromatogram, we get a mass spectrograph of the specific peaks with detailed information of the mass to charge ratio of the constituent components that make up that peak. This way, even when we do not have previous information about the specific peak in the gas chromatogram, we can utilize the mass spectrograph from the mass spectrometry part of the device to determine the specific substance in question. 
If you would like to better understand how to interpret a mass spectrograph, check out this video. Until next time.